In this video, we're going to be talking about account change, what it is, why you use it, the options, and any restrictions that the program has. The program allows you to change account codes in the account master file. As these account codes are changed, all associated transaction file records will be changed accordingly. Account change can be used to collapse multiple accounts into one new account. If the new budget or revenue account does not exist on the account master file, account change will add it automatically. When the program runs, it enters the account changes on the account change IDX file. And then when the session is ended and executed, it runs through all of the account code changes it finds on the account change IDX file. The program requires exclusive file access, which means no one else can be in the files when it's executed to make the changes. You'll be given the option to perform these changes through a batch process, which can run at night. By utilizing the overnight batch process, it is less likely to encounter a file lock, which is locked by another user. If the program does encounter a file locked by another user, it will quit and place those changes on hold. Hold puts them on the account change IDX file. Each time account change is executed, a text file is created. It is recommended that this text file be printed and retained for auditing purposes. So why would you use the account change program? You would use it for invalid accounts that maybe were found on Valac, the wrong account was used in the first place, or maybe you're ready to just simplify your account structure. Let's go ahead and talk about the options of the account change program. You can access account change by going into the menu and just simply typing in account change. Our first option is B, change budget account and associated transactions. This option will change the entered budget account and all transactions associated with that account to the newly entered account code. R, change revenue account and associated transactions. This option will change the entered revenue account and all transactions associated with that account to the newly entered account code. H, hold update for processing at a later time. The hold option allows you to make any wanted changes, but to delay posting of these changes until you are ready. The hold option will also be automatically chosen by the program if while updating the files, the program encounters a file locked by another user. To recover from a file lock or continue with changes previously put on hold, you simply need to rerun the account change program and answer yes to the account change file exists, would you like to continue using this file prompt. This will enable you to continue with posting the previously entered changes or to make additional changes. Saying no to that prompt will erase all previous changes that have been entered through account change and the accounts will not be updated. The S option, change account codes using spreadsheet file, allows you to make numerous account code changes at once via a CSV or tabbed limited file. The spreadsheet must contain a required header row with labels. We do have a template out there on the USAS documentation and the USAS reference manual. On the account change chapter in the USAS reference manual, there is a paper clip. You can click on that paper clip, and this is where you'll see the account change.csv file. This will start you off with a template which has the required header row columns for the account change program. Budget and revenue accounts may be processed in a single file. The S option will prompt if the spreadsheet should be processed for validation or to add records to the account change IDX file, with the default being the validation. Any errors or warnings encountered while processing the spreadsheet file will be written to an account change error.txt file, showing the old and new accounts and then the error. The V option is recommended to be run first and will simply validate your changes and report any where errors or warnings. Once the validation run is clean, it is recommended to rerun account change using the S option and an actual run, which will add account changes to the account change IDX file. If the spreadsheet is being processed for an actual run without a clean validation, any fatal errors encountered will prevent that account change from being written to the account change file. Upon completion of the spreadsheet option, the account change program will be exited. To proceed with actual updates to those accounts, it will be necessary to rerun account change answering yes to continue with the existing account change IDX file and the E option. E is end this session and update transaction files with the information entered. The E option ends the current session and posts any changes currently entered. Q quit end this session with no file updates. This option ends the current session and allows for no changes to be made. 
For the restrictions, a user cannot cross funds with the account change. The old and new account must belong to the same cash account. If the special cost center of the old account starts with a 9, then the fund and special cost center of the new account must exactly match the fund special cost center of the old. If the special cost center on the old account is between all zeros and 8999, this account belongs to a fund with a special cost center of all zeros. So the new account must also have a special cost center between all zeros and 89999. If you enter an account number which was previously entered as an old or new account in the same run of account change, the changes will not be allowed to take place and an error message will be received explaining that you must either enter this change through a separate run of account change or change the account number. Now we'll go ahead and run through a sample. I'm going to choose B for budget. I'm going to default to the name on the configuration screen. I'm going to take the fund 001 1100 511. If it's all zeros, you don't have to type in the all zeros. You can hit enter and the zeros are assumed. It's going to give me my old account and the description that it found. And is this the correct one? I'm going to say yes. It leaves in the account code that you had previously entered, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all the... just hit enter through these. The only thing that I'm going to change is the operational unit. It gives me the new account and the description. Do I want to continue with this? I'm say yes. It's telling me the new account code already exists on the current account file. Do I want the accounts to collapse? If I do, I would say yes. If I don't, I would hit enter for no. I'm going to say yes. At this point, this has just written the accounts to the account change IDX file. From here, I actually have to execute those changes by doing the E option. I have the ability to run the updates in a batch mode to reduce the likelihood of file locked errors. I'm going to go ahead and say no. I don't want to run this in batch, so I want to actually see it run now. So it's actually going to list all of the IDX files that it has gone through. And now I'm going to go ahead and view that account change.txt file. In here it just shows me on the left hand side what IDX file it found that in. It has the field, the key, um, the account number that was changed, the field name, the old amount, and then the new amount because they were merged. This is what should be printed off for auditing purposes. And that completes the account change program.